Hi, I'm Oliver P and the P stands for Punchbowl and today I'll be talking about Punchbowl Boys which is the setting of this book here, The F Team and I'm going to give you five reasons why you should read this book right now. Wow. Hey Tree Gum Gums, welcome back to the channel. Happy 2021, this is my first book review of the year so I'm pretty excited. Um, brand new setup, brand new camera, so that's why things look a bit different here as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so the F team, right? Love this book. This was my book of the year last year, okay? Love this book. It's a debut novel of uh, Raha Aja, and it's about this guy named Tarek. Now, Tarek is the captain of the Punchbowl Boys footy team, and he loves playing footy with his mates, dubbed the Wolfpack. And... When the school, you know, gets under a lot of flack for being a bad school and it's threatened to actually be closed down. So the step, the, um, the principal steps in, brand new guy, he offers a chance to save the school, kinda, by getting Tariq and his mates to go into a footballing competition where they have to play on a team with a bunch of other boys from Cronulla High. So a couple of things about this book, there are swear words in this book, uh, which leads me on to reason number one, this book is authentic, okay? Um, look, this is a story about Punchbowl Boys, a school that I've been to, um, I did a school visit there last year. I mean, this book really captures the essence of what it's like to be at that school, hands down. This book is about Middle Eastern Australians, Lebanese Australians, and every prejudice, every thought that you might have about them is all in this book, okay? Uh, Raha goes there and then some. And yes, there are swear words, yes, there are jokes, yes, there is, um, you know, it deals with racism, it deals with prejudice, like, you know, yeah, that's that, that, it's all in here, but this raw and honest account is so refreshing. Like, I mean, I'm blown away with how it just doesn't hold back and it's really cool that this book is actually out there on bookshelves because reason number two is the bonding between these mates in the book I mean you know you can tell that Raha actually came reason number two is the bonding between mates now you can tell that Raha has come from a teaching background because you cannot make half the stuff up that she writes in terms of the dialogue and the conversations that um, Tariq and his mates get together when they chat or when they're on social media, the way they sort of miss each other as well. It's just like, it's really, really cool. That, that banter is so strong, it's entertaining, and it just keeps you sort of going along in terms of the book. It actually, um, you know, these are boys just being boys, for better or for worse. Um, this is how they act, this is how they think, this is how they feel. Um, it's all in there, right? I mean, the wolf pack itself has got some interesting characters, like you've got Hasta Hustler, um, you've got Lovable, um, Ibi, and you've got PJ as well. And then on the other side, the Canola boys, right? Like, they're pretty cool as well. Um, you know, you've got a likable guy named Lee who is quite lethal, eh? On the footy field and off the field as well. Um, and so like, when these guys come, come together to actually make the side, it actually reminds me of the Money Ducks. You know, a bunch of like ragtag um, players who don't really know each other and they're forced to come together to get along. And look, these boys do actually come along. So this underdog rugby league story um, is in the background, but you know, what comes to the forefront is the way that these guys you know, they face off, there is lots of tension, right? plenty of tension, plenty of fights, but this is how boys work, they fight it out, they work it out, they talk it out sometimes, but mostly they just fight it out, and um, yeah, they become mates at the end, spoiler alert, but you know, the way they get there, the bonding, superb. Reason number three is the humour in this book. Now, um, ethnic humour, you know, I do ethnic humour with Tarifit and all my other books as well, it's this concept where like, if the main character actually makes fun of themselves, then it gives you permission to also laugh at the character and in turn laugh at their family, at their family background, cultural background, that kind of stuff. With that in mind, with that mentality in mind, you're going to have a hoot because, um, I mean, there are so many jokes between the boys. It's also other characters such as Tariq's enduring family 
led by their lovable and daggy dad, who means well, and also Tariq's big sister, Feda, who has, you know, some words of wisdom to give to Tariq as well. So, you know, you've got lots of family humor in here, you've got lots of cultural humor in here. So the humor, there's a lot of heart to it. It's not just making jokes for the sake of it. It actually comes from this fact that, you know, when people are together, loved ones, family, friends, they do like to poke fun at each other, and it's a-okay. I mean, when I was writing Terrific, right, there were so many jokes in there that I didn't want to put in there because I was afraid that, um, you know, it would offend people. But for Raha, she just goes straight in there. She doesn't... Reason number four is that this book is a love letter to Punchbowl. If you're going to have a book set in Western Sydney, you are got to go all in. And there's a strong sense of place in this book. Love the way that Raha describes the community, the shops, like for example, I mean, name dropping places that I've been to, because I've been to Punchbowl a couple of times as well. Like, you know, you have that typical um, grocery store that has the, the fridge that has four V cans for some reason, because, you know, like V seems to sell quite well there. And look, I, I, you know, I've been to Guildford, I've been to Maryland, same thing there as well. Um, there's also, of course, Charcoal chicken, you can't go past um, El Jana, right? Really great place. Um, I've been there, you know, garlic sauce, chicken, yep, it's mentioned there as well. And it's these little touches that really make this book so vivid. And at the very end, when the school's in trouble, the community gets together, and then that community spirit comes together as well. So it's also the people, the butchers in, in the story, um, the shopkeepers. They too are also banding together for the school because when you really think about it, that community, that, that suburb is one big giant village and, you know, Raha really nails that village-like essence in this book. Reason number five is the role models in this book. I mean, let's start off with the uh, principal, Mr. Archie, who is a no-nonsense, bulked-up guy who basically lays it bare and... Once again, another refreshing character to see someone who can talk to the boys on a certain level but still gain that respect from, you know, fellow students and teachers as well. Then you've got Tariq's um, English teacher, Miss K, who also is a great female role model for Tariq and they can talk about girls, they can talk about life as well. Really cool English teacher. Um, I can just go on and on. The adults in the book, they're great because they know when to step in, but they also know when to step out as well. So, um, you know, this isn't just a, a cheesy, everyone, let's hold hands, get together kind of thing. Like, um, the way that the boys bond, for example, at, um, at, a, at a footballing camp, right? They have to go to a footballing camp before the comp starts. And, and you've got this really, like, commando-like character, nicknamed the Commando, I guess. Um, so, you know, he's there, and yes, he's tough, and you think, oh, yeah, some cliché character, he's just meant to be that buff, hot, 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 give me ten push-ups kind of guy. But he, too, plays a part in getting these boys to bond, and he, too, also has words of wisdom. So, oh, and another role model, right, is also, I mean, I can't forget this, NRO legend, El Masri's in this book as well. From the Bulldogs, I'm a West Tiger supporter, I forgive him. <laughs> no, but honestly, like, he's such a great guy. And he actually legit does visit high schools and gives really cool inspirational talks as well. So to have him do a cameo in this book is pretty cute. Especially when E.B. I mean, is fanboying over him as well, so it's pretty cool. Oh, and another thing, big respect to having an Asian-Australian rugby league player in this book. Lee is a whole lot of fun, not just stereotypical Asian kind of character as well. Like, he basically is a really cool, fast runner, winger in this book. And he's also pretty fast with his mouth as well, with some really snappy one-liners. So, well, there we have a tree gum gums. This is my hot take on the F team. Book of the Year, you know how I feel about this book. Everyone should read this book. Now, when I say um, books that people should read, I'm going to mention the F team because you cannot get more cultural diverse than this beautiful book. If you have read the F team, let me know how you feel about this book as well. Are you a fan of Rugby League? Let me know as well. Should there be more books about Rugby League? I say yes as well. Well, that's it for me, guys. Don't forget to like, sub, and share if you care, and I will catch you guys in the next video. I'm Mother P. Peace out.
哇